Hello, everyone. I hope you guys can hear me. I'm so grateful to be on here today. We are excited about this wonderful opportunity. The song that you're listening to is by Andre Day. Uh, it's called Rise Up. I'm not the owner of that song, but I thought it was a great opportunity for us to just listen to it and go from there. I'm hoping that each and every last one of you are doing very, very well. Looking forward to connecting with you guys for the next about 30 to 40 minutes, the next 30 to 40 minutes. And so what I want us to do before we get started, uh, it's a very serious conversation. It's a very um, unique opportunity for us to be able to have discussions. Um, and so with that, we are going to be talking about something that we don't always talk about. I entitled this particular first part of a two-part series, Mind Matters, and it's focusing on Black women and their mental health. This particular two-part series is in direct response to the recent death by suicide of Miss Joss Waters. She's the brilliant writer of the This Is Us show. I did not know her. I was just tagged in the information that, that had happened last week. And uh, because people know that I'm a wellness curator and a mental health professional and all of that, and what it is that my desire is in this life, um, they wanted me to know that someone had committed suicide and that she was a black woman, 39 years old and had hung herself. I'm intentionally speaking very slowly because I want us to hear the reality of what happens in our lives. This segment and the segment on Monday is not a segment to look, to scrutinize, to analyze, or to even dig into Mrs. Waters' life. It is to make us look at our own lives and to really, really get serious about the trauma that's going on in our head. I know as a Black woman, having lived very graciously on this earth for 45 years young, that there are so many things that happen to us on a day-to-day -day basis. Many, which we do not deal with, some which we do. And for those of you who have a faith in God, we take it to God in prayer. Even with all of those things, there are things that still happen to our psyche, our spirit, our heart, our mind, and even our physical bodies that we cannot always understand. And so what I want us to do tonight is get real and get raw. I pray that each and every last one of you uh, that have joined us by way of Zoom, by way of live stream, please do watch parties. This will probably be one of the most passionate um, times that I'll be speaking this year uh, on this particular topic and that I will singly call out Black sisters and Black women. I think that we've been taught for some of us to ignore the various pains in our lives. We definitely sometimes ignore pains, physical pains, uh, and we can't always ignore those uh, too much because we can actually feel the physicality of that pain. But what about the pain that we cannot feel, but it keeps showing up in our lives? The irritability, the moodiness that will not go away, the 45 pounds that stay stuck on our bodies even though that we're very active. Uh, the inability to complete tasks, the fogginess, the unclearness that tends to happen when we're just going throughout our day, the frustration, the immediate, I just want to scream type of thing. All these different types of things is that hidden aspect of life that we do not talk about, that we do not deal with. My desire today is that you be pricked in your mind, your heart, and in your spirit that you quit allowing yourself to give up yourself to everything else and not focus on the things that are currently bothering you in some shape, form, or fashion. When I did the research and I looked, because we understand that many of us will go through trauma, will go through some level of discontent as it pertains to our emotions. When I looked at the background of suicide, 800,000 people a year commit suicide every single year. That is one person every 40 seconds in the entire world, okay? That's 800,000. It is the 10th leading cause of death in the US for all ages. 123 Americans die by suicide every day. 
You do the math, 365 days in a year times 123. That is a lot of people that are dying in the US by way of suicide. That would suggest that if it's 123 Americans dying in the US by suicide, that is one every 12 minutes. So by the time we are done with this particular broadcast, if there are 12 minutes and there are at least, um, let's say uh, there are, we're just letting you know there's 60 minutes. Um, and so if you have 12, five, so we're looking at at least seven people seven people um, will die by suicide by the time we're done with this broadcast. Last week, tragically, one of those persons was Miss Josh Waters. I'm not sure what happened. I don't know her life to the extent that I can even speak to it. We don't know people based on what they produce. And this is what I'm after. Because in the African-American community, a lot of what we do is based on what you see. My desire, especially for those who say they have faith in God or a believer or Christian, I want you to understand Christianity is not a weak faith. It is a faith that allows you to be transparent with your own soul, with your own heart, and with your own mind. The scripture tells us that hope deferred makes the heart sick. But with the desire coming, it is a tree of life. And most people who are sick, even in their physical bodies, it's because some element of hope has been delayed or deferred in their lives. It is super important that you understand that those who succumb to suicide, they have depression. And it's about 20 to 25% of those numbers are actively depressed. I want us to really get clueful about a couple of things. And please hear my heart. You're looking at someone who is only here today because of the power of God's word and his spirit drawing me to himself. I had a lot of issues growing up as a young person. I started off very precocious, smart, excitable, and all of that. And something happened at age eight. I was molested one time, but all it takes is one time. And my mood, my attitude changed, shifted. I was angry, irritable. And then on top of that, I had sort of sibling uh, stuff where um, I was always just sort of talked about and things of that nature. And what I did was rather than be strong, because you're eight, how can you be strong when you get that kind of your dark skin or your feet got corned or whatever the case may be, I internalized it, which most of us do. And in internalizing it, I had great self-hatred, which continued a cycle of self-hate, sabotage, depression, obsessive compulsive, and all sorts of other things. My saving grace was God's word. My saving grace was Miss Mary Kay Thomas. My saving grace was the presence of God, which is why I'm very big on people having a, their own authentic experience with the Lord. You must have an experience with God yourself or none of it will really make sense for you. And because I had that experience early on at the age of 11 and a half, and I still struggled, but I, at the age of 11 and a half, I had that experience and God was drawing me. I started to get into the word of God. And then by the time I got to 15, I was full-fledged. I was already in Christ. I'd been a Christian since I was four years old. I'd been baptized. Then I got re-baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus when I was 12 years old and God set my life on course. But I remember the depression times. And then I still battled with depression all the way up till I was 19 years of age and struggled. And I started to learn more about the depression that came upon me, the, the depression that sat in me. And God reminded me what he told me when I was 15, that if I would do what he called me to do, he would give me the insights to man's mind, that man might be set free. When I speak of man, I'm speaking of the human totality of both men and women. And he has done that. He has given me insight. I've got volumes of things written down that are in no book from no psychologist or psychiatrist. I am not a psychologist. I am not a psychiatrist. 
I happen to be someone who went to school and got my degrees and, and master's and doctorate of education and counseling psychology. And I, I just love this and I love God's word. And I'm called to merge the two so that we can be well from the inside out. I'm bringing light to this conversation because there are many things that we do and we do not understand that we do this as black women. I want you just for a moment because I don't want you to go away thinking I've never had or wanted to commit suicide. I've never wanted to commit suicide because I was always fearful of death, but I have done things that were suicidal. I have self-sabotaged myself. I've been suicidal with my own finances. I've been suicidal in relationships. So there are other ways that you and I can become suicidal other than the physical act of committing that particular way of dying. And I want us to pay attention to the other areas as well. Please note that we do have some folks that are both on Zoom as well as Facebook, the Anad Burrell. So if she's interacting with you, she's working with us. So if you have questions, please make sure that you put your questions out there and she will feel those questions back to us right here while we are live. Here's the thing I need for us to consider. It is very, very important that you do not think that all of the things that you have gone through as I have gone through my many things in my life, that they're just going to dissipate. We've got to make sure that in our lives, as a, for example, if you've been divorced, if you've had an abortion, if you've been uh, abused, if you've uh, abused if domestic, if spiritual abuse, if, if economic abuse, uh, if you've let yourself down, if a spirit of procrastination has overtaken your whole life, which are really bouts of depression, be very clear. If you are a procrastinator, that is bouts of depression. And that's a whole other conversation at another time. But if you are procrastinating to do things that you say you want to do and you don't get to it, you have symptoms and symptology of depression. Very, very clear for you to understand that and important for you to understand that. So with all of the different traumas and things that we go through, there are things that happen in our bodies that relate to the trauma that we experience. In neuroplasticity, it's an opportunity where the cells in our body remember the trauma and the pain. So number one, if you're writing notes, pain has memory. Trauma has an ability to trigger up the pain and that pain has memories. So what happens is you are always constantly rehearsing the pain of a thing and going back to the issue of the trauma. This is why the word of God is so important about renewing your mind with the word. It's the only thing that can counteract the assault against man's spirit and against man's soul and against man's physical being personhood is God's word. So we utilize God's word for what it's used for. It is a shield. It is a buckler. It is a thing that allows us to be strengthened when we are weak. But what has to happen is the application of God's word. And what I'm finding out is that many of us are not utilizing God's word, nor do we believe we need to actually deal with the pain and the trauma of our past. So what happens is, sisters, it starts to seep up. So where you think you've been free, you are not free. Anytime that you can willfully speak ill of someone you know nothing about, there is a sickness that has happened in you and is still protruding out of you when you can speak ill of me and you don't know me. And to know me is not to just see me one time. To know me is to know my spirit my heart, my movement, which takes time. And so when you and I move in a space where we're not even able to be willing to find out who another person is, there's a, a level of some level of sickness that is going on emotionally, all right, mentally. I know people may not believe it and it's okay. I just know it's true. That's what the Bible tells us that we ought to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. The first commandment is to love the Lord thy God with everything that we got on the inside. And now I understand being 45, why God said that. Because if we can keep God's love supreme, when the enemy comes in trying to make us doubt our own self-love, we can look to God and say, God of love, please allow me to have love for myself, which would allow me to then have love for everyone else. All right. 
So number one, we understand pain and trauma has memory. Number two, and I think it's really, really important. You must deal with your trauma and you must deal with it in the layers in which it came. And we are hiding behind ministerial positions, placements, and we're even trying to hide behind anointings. You cannot hide behind any of those things. You must come from among that thing and be separate. You must deal with where you are. And if you notice, every person that Jesus called, Gideon, Moses, he always dealt with what they said that they had, even though it was not anything he cared to know. Gideon, I came from a poor family. He started giving all these excuses. And while he yet gave those excuses, God allowed him to be strengthened in the process and made sure that he knew he was still a mighty man of valor. And so God is always interested in making sure we deal with our mindset in a thing before he moves us to the next thing. He did the same thing with Moses. I cannot speak. I stammer. I stammer. And they're not going to hear me. Why would they hear me? And then the Lord rebuked him and shared with him, well, I will send Aaron and he will be your spokesperson, but you will do what I say. And then Jeremiah helped us to be reminded that, hey, quit saying that you're a child. Quit saying that you're this, that, and the other, because I ordained you. I foreknew you. So it's very, very important that we don't hide behind roles and positions. Because when you are faced with your dark time, my dear sister, and there's no one there but you in the dark time, you in the dark thought, you in the dark whatever, uh, you don't have time to try to call on your being an evangelist or a pastor or whatever. The enemy doesn't care because when that spirit really sits on you and if you've not really given thought to it, but you've allowed it to grow up with you because that spirit does grow up with you, the spirit of heaviness, because you don't even realize unconsciously, you and I have done it before. We unconsciously rehearse what we think we are not. This is why the Bible is always talking about renewing your mind and be not transformed to the world. The world sits and thinks about all of where they've been. We, we should be saying to God, this is where I was. I was a crazy 11 year old, 12 year old. I thought so terrible about myself, but we cannot stay there. So you must understand the power of your past and don't be willing to just jump into somewhere else and thinking that you can just be something else, if that makes any sense. One of the things that I also think that's really, really important, number three, if you are following us, my heart ached to know that a 39-year-old woman who's just six years shy of being 45 years young did something in her thought process and decided she was going to create something in her home and hang herself. You have to completely decide life is not worth it. And I need to stop right now for all of you that are watching, life is worth it. Your insecurities, your desirability to be perfect, poor decision-making processes, all those things result back to some kind of way in which you think. Your inability to be a loyal friend, but you want loyalty from friends. You got to look at that, sister. I know nobody wants to talk about it. Your ability to say that, that these sisters are, are I, don't, I don't fool with women. I never want to hear that. You are a woman. So do you not fool with you? You may have had experiences with other women, but you've got to change the narrative of your story. You've got to change the narrative of your story. As a man or a woman thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you thought about the fact that whatever your experience was with women, that, you know, I, I don't do that. I don't do women. Well, you're going to create the atmosphere to it. Yes, you will. Absolutely. And it's going to trigger however you have thought. If we're going to be serious about letting our minds be renewed and having a new narrative, a new story, then we've got to do away with the way in which we have talked and thought about friendships and relationships. Super important. The next thing that's so important, my Black sisters, is that you've got to know, you've got to know that tears is one thing, but the inability to be cleansed after your tears is something else. What I mean by that? What do I mean by that? I can cry today, but crying is designed to be a release. And a lot of us black sisters, 
and over the last 20 years, we cry just enough to feel excitable and have a cathartic in therapy, a cathartic experience, a feeling like, woo, I can go on. But do you notice that you go back to a thing and it's worse than the way in which you was before you cried? But the scripture also talks about that, that when, when there's an unclean spirit that goes out of a man, the Bible says they, that it goes back they go back to look to see if that man is, the, what state that man is. And so the scripture says when it, that thing comes back, that spirit comes back, that issue comes back, it brings back seven things more stronger than the first. And that person, the Bible says, is what more worse than the first. And I'm trying to share with you, God's word is just true. Whether you look at it from the context of theology or the context from psychology, whenever a, a foul thing comes out of us, even in the areas of emotions, when we don't really get a good release and we don't guard the thing and guard our hearts and mind and spirit, once it leaves, well, that thing is coming back to see if you're really protecting that area of your life. And if it finds that you're not, it will bring seven other spirits. So that's why the depression is strong than the last time. Anxiety is overwhelming than the last time. I hope and pray I'm making sense to us that we cannot be frivolous when we've got a deliverance or are set free or our mere tears coming down our face. We should be saying, God, while the tears are coming, heal me, heal my thoughts, heal my intent, heal my emotions, heal my spirit that I don't feel the injury of the hurt words words hurt that's why the bible tells us that the power of life and death is in the tongue so we know that words hurt that's why the bible talks so much about be not a person that slanders with your word be not ensnared by the words that you say do not be a talebearer. do not promote false witness against your neighbor things about the words that we say are powerful They'll put a man in physical prison and put a man in emotional prison and both will die. One will be physically and one will be spiritually. Words are important. And if it's you, sister, that speaks the negative words to yourself, I speak to your spirit. Be free. Get honest about where you are. We're not all together. We don't have it all together all the time. And let me share with you, Facebook is not the place to let all things be known because the enemy uses that as a platform to come and become an accuser of the brethren. So get you some sisters, find you a therapist, and I can name several of them that are great at what they do. So you can let things out and let it come up well, and then God can heal because you've asked him to. I pray that that makes sense. So as we continue this conversation, I need for you all to truly understand and hear my heart. What I'm really talking about today is mind matters. I am talking about the inability of us in all of our brilliance that many of us Black women have, but the inability to get real raw and truthful with ourselves. And I would like to suggest to all of us that if you have an issue with your friend or your mother or your father, what are you waiting on? Talk about it, get it out, not of your chest, out of your psyche. We have a conscious, unconscious and a subconscious. We're not going into that. We have an id, a super ego, and we have a, a, a uh, a parental side of us that works, okay? And so all of those things, all of those things make up our psyche, which is what allows us to think the way that we think. But if we are not releasing what we have been experiencing, then we keep bringing things on top of each other until no one can actually see us for who we are. It is high time right now, high time that we get real about it. My spirit is just so adamant. I, I'm not, I'm just like, God, there's got to be something else that we can do, that we can say that you quit sabotaging your future. Quit sabotaging it. You talk more negative in your head than you believe and that you know. 
If you want to lose 50 pounds, then I dare you to get serious about doing it. I dare you to get an accountability partner and call them. I dare you to fight and scream until you get to your goal. But you've got to get to it so you can quit talking bad about the fact that you started something and you didn't finish. We don't really talk about mental health in our families like we should, even though it's 2020. The reality of mental health to some is that they're okay. I don't need you to be okay for right now. I need for you to have tools in your hand and in your heart when you are not okay, when you are beyond okay and things are really going on. What is your go-to? Where are you going to divulge that place of inadequacy? As I slow down for just a second, and I, I think for a moment, two years ago, just about this time, uh, or actually it was in May, one of the elders from my church committed death by suicide in an awful way. He jumped off the Bay Bridge. Having talked to him the night before, I knew something was up, but never in my million, million, million minds and million, million years would I have ever thought it was that. That situation with that elder changed my whole perspective about life and why it's important that when you tell me you're well, I'm asking you again, how are you mentally? And then I'm checking in with God, are they really okay? So important. I think, I think that as black women, we falsely take on things that does, do not belong to us. And every time you and I do that, we don't allow ourselves to go past where we've been. One of the greatest gifts my mother gave me, and maybe because she saw that the precocious young Lakita changed to where I really didn't know who I was. I was just so eager to please people because I just lost my identity. I was trying to figure out why did you molest me? Why did you do that? Why did this happen? Why do I feel like my family doesn't like me? All these things that I had, my mother gave me the strength of being mentally strong. She would put it in me. And in times of my greatest weakness, where I just thought, you know, my life is over. I just felt like, because I, I didn't do right by my money. It's like when I was in college and I would say, where's all the money? And, and I just didn't have a great sense of monies and just always feel like I'm trying to play catch up and all of this stuff. Before it could get really crazy, I would just fixate my mind that I'm better than this. And of course, because I was student in the word of God, God's word flooded my heart. And I would let the presence of God be my reward, no matter where I was at. And so I want to encourage every Black woman on this call, or every woman in the case that I have some of my other sisters that have joined us, if you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and you do not know God in a way that you can personally say he's my father and he's in you. I encourage you before anything else that you have a relationship with God to where you can feel his presence. That is the only thing that will safeguard you from some of these dark places and danger places that some people never ever come back from. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. And so to discuss and to talk about how we move forward, dealing with the trauma in our head. I need for us to look at the things that we do not want to. Molestation, rape, abortion. Some of us have lied to ourselves so long, it hurts to actually tell the truth. Lied to ourselves about what we feel we are able and capable of doing. Super duper important that you quit lying to yourself and you get in the space to deal with all the different traumas that you have going on that keep popping up. You've been wanting to apply for a different position of work at your job. 
and the fear is so paralyzing, that too can become a mental health issue where fear is so paralyzing that you don't have no level of growth in your life. And the Bible says, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So if you and I are saying that our soul prospers, that we should see prosperity in other areas of our lives. Really, really important. So as we just take the moment to share a couple of other things about trauma in our heads, and I'm just introducing this series being very, very strategic and intentional about the words that I say. Please write your questions down. Would love to answer any questions that you have, no matter what it is. Any questions that you have, would love to answer those questions that you have. This is a question that I'm often asked. How do I rewire my brain? from being a negative person. How do I rewire my brain from being a negative person? And I wanna answer that question in two ways. Whatever you and I are is based upon several different things. How we were reared, how we thought about that rearing, the perspective in which we lived, the familiar uh, advantages that we had, what we saw, what we received, and how we moved and how we were received or accepted. In order to change anything, and I'm more of a cognitive behaviorist, uh, that's really my modality. I like to do things that will change your thought process. I like to, for people to be able to learn how to redo things and to uh, reshape your cognitive belief system. I believe that if you have a faulty belief system, that your whole outlook on life is faulty. And I'm only speaking from what I know by way of education and what I know also by being my own case study and the thousands of people that I have had to work with as it pertains to their cognitive distortions that they've had about their lives, okay? I believe very wholeheartedly that if you wanna change and rewire the way you think, you're going to have to insert your thought process with new thinking, super important. You won't even get everything out of God that you want if you have the wrong thought process about God. If you were taught about God in the wrong way and you and you only allow yourself to gravitate towards that way, well, you're only gonna get that, that thing. That's why you've gotta eat the whole Bible. You've gotta eat the whole role. You've gotta come into wanting to know about Jesus Christ and God in a way that makes you better and not just makes you happy. So in order to rewire your brain from being a negative person, you have to identify where that negativity started. For many Blacks, sometimes we were reared to not even like women, other girls, you, a mother, a cousin, uh, a sister may have told you, don't trust her. She's going to backstab you. She's going to try to steal your man. All those things, you need to cast all that stuff down. Even if it may be true in some instances, it ain't everybody. So if I go around thinking that it is even some people, then there will be a trigger that I might see that same thing in somebody. No, don't be blinded when you go into new relationships or interacting with people, but that's the Holy Spirit's job. It's to lead and to guide us into all truth is what the scripture says. It's to bring us into a knowing that we might have an understanding. So when you are abiding in the Lord and you're abiding in the spirit of Christ, when you're abiding in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is great at letting us know what he is and what is not. And when we depend on the Holy Spirit for the very essence of your life, it will direct you about a thing, about a person, you know, and see, we only become blindsided when we start to idolize someone more than where we should. We should not expect that in relationships, uh, friendships, that there will be no times where we will get hurt. People are people and they might indeed hurt us. But if you go in with this nonsense that they're so perfect and they're just going to be all good, it's not true. It's not true. You just choose to love the way that you need to love everybody and you'll find out if their pattern is harmful to your being. So at going back to the question, 
How do I rewire myself from being a negative person? You've got to go back to the origin of when it started. So number one, go back to the origin. Go back to the origin of where the negativity started. It cannot be that it was someone else. You developed the pattern of believing a certain way. It's in you now, but where did it come from? Where did it start? Okay, super duper important. Where did it start? The second thing, after you find out what the origin of a thing is, and I hope you guys are following me. And please, if you have questions, uh, Yanad is going to get those questions for us so that we can do it. The, go to the origin of a thing. And then the next thing, after you go to the origin, why did you believe it? Why did you believe it? Have you not developed a belief system about yourself? So you have to ask yourself, why did I believe what was said? Why did I believe it? Whatever the reason was, write it down. Number three, change your belief system about every area of your life. So let's start. Change your belief system about friendship. I do not believe that every person that comes to my life is out to harm me. The Holy Spirit has been good to me 45 years. I've been in Christ Jesus for 30 plus, strongly in Christ Jesus, spirit field, and has not left me un able to discern who was who. So change your belief in every situation. I am a more than a conqueror. I am a daughter of the Lord. The Holy Spirit resides in me. The spirit of God shows me all things. I am a woman of wisdom. I am the woman of power. I am the woman of understanding. I am full of joy. I am full of knowledge. I do have the ability to discern. I will not walk into traps. I am not easily succumb to. I'm not easily susceptible to. I, you, you understand what I'm saying? It ain't just words. You're matching your belief system with the fact that God's word said we can have something and you're believing it as you walk it out daily. So you change your belief. Number four, you have to change your speech. Change your speech or change your narrative. Both of those are the same. Change your narrative, your speech, change your story. I'm not a victim. <coughs> I'm not a victim. You're not a victim. You might have been victimized, but we cannot move in victimization. Victimization will always cause us to be the essence of someone's target because they can smell that we want to be a victim. If you were a person like I was, I was easily offended and easily hurt because I sat all day and rehearsed how bad I was. You're ugly, you're too dark skinned, your nose is big, you got corns on your feet, and you know, all these things. You're poor, you get hand me downs. I would say those things to myself. So, because of it, I was easily angered, easily full of self hatred, easily believing that every time someone said something to me, I took it personal. If you are a person that takes everything personal, you have not grown emotionally. If everything that comes to your hearing affects you, you are not mature. And you should check in with yourself because that means that you are easily susceptible to really snapping. That means you are not dealing with who you are on the inside. Super duper important. If you're just joining us, we're talking about ways to go from being a negative person and how to become much more positive in your thinking. Because these are the things that lead to depression, anxiety, paranoia, and disrupted relationships, and ultimately suicidality, suicide. And I see that some of you guys have this uh, information, uh, some questions. There is a question, so I'm going to pause for a second and get what the question is, when and where will this content be available? Well, uh, next week, my team and I have been previously working. Uh, we have 10, I said 10, 10 eBooks that will be dropping uh, to commemorate my 30 years of doing this work. This is my 30th year this year. 
10 ebooks and you're going to want to get the bundle of the ebooks uh 10 ebooks that will be dropping next week and there's a plethora of stuff uh with all this content in that ebook we have uh the power of now uh ebook we have um mental health why now why what what for the, a ton a ton of ebooks so it will be available for download uh that you'll be able to download those 10 ebooks um all at once and so thank you so much for sharing and asking that particular question are there any other questions that you may have right at this moment as we get ready to come to our close of our first part of our first segment of the trauma in our heads this is your time make sure you make your time available someone asked here on facebook um, that healing is work healing is definitely work it, and it requires work and if you are unwilling to work um it's going to make it very difficult for you to grow if you're unwilling to work then growth is going to be very very slow okay you've got to be willing to do the work but you also have to be willing to understand that if you are not changing then you have definitely locked into a certain way of belief. Super duper important. No way around it. If you tell someone I'm over it, three days later, three years later, it comes back up strong, just like it did the day it happened. You are not over it and you better be careful because you're the one that's unconsciously rehearsing all of that in your head, heart and spirit. Super duper important. I really hope this is helping. I need for you guys to feel my burden, feel the heart. You don't get the right to just be mad and angry. You don't get the right to cause all kinds of misfirings to happen in your physical body because you're angry and you're stressed all the time. You don't get to do that. And then other people catch it on the other side and they never know why you operate the way that you do. Own up to where you are. Tell people, you know, for the last 30 days, I've been a little bit in a depressive cycle, up and down. Tell people, and I'm not really myself right now. I'm just kind of going through some things right now. So I'm going to gather myself. So if I come off to you in a wrong way, I need for you to forgive me now because I'm just kind of trying to process something. Start, talk, be transparent, be available for truth. Be available for truth. So many, um, so many things that people are, are saying. I just am so appreciative of, of being able to, to be on here. And we're getting ready to come to a close. Uh, but I wanted Black women to quit hiding. If you've had any form of trauma, pain, and need a healing, get it. Quit hiding behind your good job, your family. It doesn't heal the hurt if you hide the pain. You cannot heal the hurt by hiding the pain. And I know pain and I know what it feels like and what it looks like. I've had to go to my car before and scream at the top of my lungs. At least I frighten, you know, my neighbors or my children or stay in the shower for 30 minutes long so I can just scream it out or let the water wash my tears as I gasp for air and for breath. Because that one more thing happened that just like wiped me out emotionally. Here's the other thing that I would like to leave us with. And I need for you all to do this for me. With all the racial things that are going on and the climate shifting and changing, I need you to make a concerted effort to first start with your own self by treating your own self well. Quit making appointments and goals and things that you have no intentions to keep for yourself. Quit saying you're going to get up and go walk a mile and you never do it. We're in shelter in place now. Everybody should be out every single day, seven days a week. Why? Because we eat seven days a week. So we should be working out every single day, even if it's just a mile. So the very first thing I want us to do is to take the moment, my black sisters, 
Start loving yourself a little bit more to be truthful with yourself. Get real with yourself. If a sister you see makes you feel some kind of way when you see her or when she speaks, something ain't right in you, not them. They don't even know that you've got an issue with them. Ask God, what is that when I see her? I feel something because it ain't right. So the first thing I want us to do, go back to loving ourselves, super duper important. And then number two, make it a habit. Congratulate the sister girl, love your shoes. Love it, Congrat I know you say, oh, I do it all the time. Really do it all the time. And then start doing it to those who have crossed you wrong. Most of our sickness in the black community is because of the stress and unforgiveness that we hold in our hearts. Super duper important that you are not holding unforgiveness and easily being offended and all the stuff that you yourself have the ability to control. So love yourself, love on another sister. And number three, desire wholeness, desire healing from the inside out. Desire it in a way that is unexplainable. Desire the healing. Desire the healing. So for those of you who may have gotten on here, depressed and anxious or trauma field or some kind of trigger has happened, may I encourage you, you are never alone. You are never alone. There is another way to think better. Reach out to an IYCC or to someone who can help you. But I'm telling you, you must be willing to do the work. Super duper important. Super important. We are at our tail end of what I wanted us to start off with concerning Mind Matters, which happens to be on our Wellness Wednesday broadcast. On Monday, July 20, I mean, June 22nd, we will have part two that will be prolific and profound as we have some of the people joining us. But I need for you to get serious about your mental health. I need for you to get serious about your health in general, in general. Please get serious about it. Get serious. And do you have any other questions? And I come against every depressive, anxious spirit that has been growing up with each of you out in the world for 20, 30 years. Some of you got depression sitting on you from 30 years ago. It's still there. It may look like it went but it just went and hid under something else. Anxiety, paranoia, cognitive distortions, all or nothing thinking, black or white thinking, faulty belief systems, all of those things contribute to your inability to be your absolute best self. And I can talk about it because I lived it. I lived it until God gave me a freedom that I could scream at the top of my lungs. And I'm ordained, called, anointed with a mandate from God to help people get set free and never have to walk back there because I know what it looks like to get into a dark place and don't think that you're going to come out of the dark place. You don't feel like coming out of the dark place. You want to want to sit in it, but I'm telling you, I dare you not to sit another moment because you might not come out. There's a place and I'll share this, what God gave me when I was just 16 years old. The Lord told me as a 16 year old, there's a place called no return that is not seen in the visible eye. It is a spiritual place that happens when you and I have given our will over to that other side. And what I did in my stupidness and craziness, the Lord says, you don't have a whole lot of time. Don't keep playing with the dark side. I used to make myself be depressed. 
I would say I was ugly until I felt so low and so heavy. It was like my drug. And then I would cry. And then I would say, oh, but I'm not ugly. I'm great. I'm going to be strong. And then I'll bring myself out. Then I'll do that thing again. And then I'll bring myself out. And then one day, God said to me, the Holy Spirit said to me, if you go there again, you might not come out. And whatever state that you find yourself in, that's right where, you, where you'll be at. And being the person that I am, and I'm so grateful that God knew who I was and how he made me. I just had to put myself in that place of no return. But I'm, I'm here to tell you, I fought like hell to come out of that. It was not no just asking God. I fought like hell to get my mind free. And I knew then, God, if you ever freed me from what I experienced in my head, I promise I'll do what you want me to do. And that's when he says, great. I want you to make biblical principles a household name. I asked the question, how do I do that? He says, you're going to use biblical principles and psychological concepts to help people to come to know who they are and help them to see who I am. And you're going to be a marketplace minister, evangelist in the world, bringing people to Christ who otherwise would not come into God or into the church because they do not know who this God is. And you're going to show them who I am. And I said, yes. And when I think God believed that I would not want to be a corporate attorney anymore, that I had wanted to be since I was in fourth grade, literally, and I just want to cry almost right now, the Lord set me free, but I did not think I was going to mentally be free. I was in a dark place. So I know darkness on multiple levels, on satanic levels. So that's why I know when I enter satanic areas, I know what's fighting you, whether it's clinical, spiritual. I know. And I'm humbled to be able to serve. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So for those of you who have chimed in, uh, thank you for allowing me to just share my heart to Miss Waters' family who are dealing with the suicide and, and left to deal with all that that you're left to deal with the un unknown questions and unknown answers. I am praying for all of you. And those of you who have experienced people in your family who've committed suicide. And for those of you who specifically fight day and night just to get your mind right, you don't have to fight alone. I pray that the spirit of the living God, the same God by his power and his might that freed me, I was a crazy girl. I was a crazy girl. If I had to diagnose myself, I had ADHD, conduct disorder, histrionic. I had personality disorders. I lied so much. I just had so much going on, so much going on. And it all started from a place. I wasn't born that way. It starts from a, a broken space that I never got fixed until I decided I needed it to be healed repaired, renewed, and God through his power did it. And I went through counseling with my counselor, Ms. Mary Kay Thomas, who was a school counselor, but God used her in a magnificent way to just remind me, God didn't create me to die. He didn't create me to be ugly. And my spirit was very ugly because I thought very ugly about myself. Are there any questions? And yes, the um, eBooks will be on my site. I will find out from my team if they are ready for even for uh, pre-order. Um, once uh, they're just waiting on uh, the downloadable aspects that I need to send to them. And then you will get all 10 eBooks. I believe it's 79 bucks for all 10 eBooks. They are powerful. They are powerful. And what, what we're doing, the reason why we're doing 10 eBooks for 79 bucks, I think there's also, you can get the 10 eBooks and then there's also class, a class that goes to each of the eBooks. If you want the class, I think it's the class and the eBooks, I think it's like 129 um, when you can come to an actual uh, video class and with the eBook. Um, the reason why I'm doing this for the next 60 days is because I don't really want our counseling center, Inspiring Counseling Center to have to accept monies from people. We don't really have the time to do that. We want to raise the monies and the funds so that anybody that just needs help, they can just get it. 
they can just get it. It's so encumbersome to be trying to do insurance and this and people can't pay or they don't have the money. I just hate it because that's not really what I'm called for. I'm called to speak to the masses. I'm called to speak to the many people. So it really just kind of frustrates me and bothers me to have to do the exchange and not that I don't need the money. I need the money so we can keep doing the work. But it just feel some kind of way. Cause I know that it was God that gave me the gift. And then he allowed the gift and all the information he gave me to, to, to go to school. God gave it to me. So it feels a little bit weird to exchange it. So um, those books will be available. I believe that they will be available on Monday, if I'm not mistaken, on Monday or before you guys will be notified of that on Facebook and, and via email as well. If there are any questions, we will ask them now. Oh, one last thing. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. The one thing I really want to say that is so important, and I'm going to bring Ianad on the where you can unmute yourself, is this. You've got to quit letting people tell you who you are. Super important. You are not what they said. You are not what they say. You're not what they said. And you're not what they say. Super duper important. I don't even right now in the environment that I'm in right now, when people start speaking adversely about anything, and if it cramps my style, I don't even listen. I don't even listen. Um, if I, I can unmute some of those of you who are in the Zoom if you would like to just not so much your video, but if you want to actually say the question out loud, raise your hand so that the people on Facebook could actually hear your question. All right. If you want to do that, feel free to do that. Are there any questions that anyone has? Raise your hand. And then we will let you do that. All right. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. Anything else? I pray that the information has been inspiring to you, encouraging to you. Black sisters, black sister girls, my sister friends, please do not negate what we talked about today. Go back and look at this video again. Rewatch it over. Send it to a friend. You might just help them. They're trying to bear something all by themselves and it has not worked for the last 30 years, the last 40 years. It is not going to work them trying to do it on their own. They must reach out to someone who thinks differently, understands cognitive processing and can be able to shift them, turn them and cause them to see, feel and think differently. Super duper important. You can go to our website, www.mhicnow.org if you would like to give a donation. Uh, all of it is used for everything that we have, our program for mental health in the church, our program of youth talk, which is with young people. We also have uh, our Wood Shepherds Bleed, which focuses on pastors and leaders. That's a program that we also have as well. We're in the process of doing an app as well as a video game, mental health video game. So the first to ever do such. So any donation you want to give, great. The main donation I want you to give is the one that you give to yourself. And that is be true to thyself and then thyself can be true to you. I do so love you guys so super much. That's mhicnow.org, mhicnow.org, okay? Any other questions that you have? Any other questions? that you have. Thank you guys so much. I see all of the, the I'm trying to operate off the phone that I just had to get and all this wonderful stuff. I love you guys. Next Monday, 530, it will be part two, the culmination of it, but you will not want to miss it. You will not want to miss it because we're going to take it just a little bit deeper. If you need to reach us, 925 238 8711, 925-238-8711. Make sure you tell a friend and also let us know that you need to talk to someone. Love you guys so much, much blessings and God really, really be with you guys.